Hey, what's up guys? Nadia and Sands back yet again for, oh, 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 what, what's that? Oh, is that the play button that finally came? Oh, it is! Wow. So that's real exciting. Uh, Nadia and Sands here back yet again for another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. Today's another installment of how to edit like Zack King, doing a little bit of movie magic, editing, masking magic, and After Effects. And we're gonna do this effect today, the running late, jump through door, change clothes, super fast gag. It's a real cool gag, obviously. Fairly easy to achieve. It's a little bit of setup with the shooting and then a little bit of setup with the editing, but I'm convinced that by the end of this video, you'll be able to do it yourselves. So what you will need to shoot this thing is a tripod. Absolutely, you have to make sure the camera does not move, so you must, must, must have a tripod for this. Your camera cannot be set to autofocus because you definitely don't want it trying to track focus while you're trying to do this effect. And third, you're gonna wanna set your white balance manually so that your auto white balance isn't shifting while you're shooting this because if it shifts in the middle and then something's blue versus, yeah, it, it just causes a lot of problems. So tripod, manual focus, manual white balance. The next thing you have to remember is kind of your body position where you run into the door or the closet or whatever you're trying to do because the clothes have to kind of match up as best as you possibly can with where your body was before they dropped to the the floor, so that's super important. Then for the editing part, just a couple quick layers, a little bit of masking, and then voila, you have yourself a quick close change through the door, kind of, you, you know what I'm talking about. Zach King does it, we're doing it today. Open up After Effects, because we're getting started. All right, boys and girls, After Effects is open and we are diving right in. Over here in my project window, I have the full clip of me running into the door, doing a bunch of takes, and then dropping the clothes individually. So what I'm gonna do is take that clip and just drag it right down here onto the new composition button, and it's gonna create a new composition for the entire length of my my clip. Now, if I scrub through this, you can see I kind of did a couple different takes of running into the door, and then I go off camera, and then I change into my new outfit that I'm gonna have when I open the door, and then I come back into frame, and I start lining up against the door, kind of where my clothes were, and then we're gonna drop each garment individually, making sure that we clear as much as we can out of the way of the door so that we can mask around our objects as they fall to the ground. So this is kind of important. So matching up with your body position and then keeping just your fingertips on the top of the garment and then letting it hit the ground. And we're gonna do that with the shirt. There you go. And with the hat, there you go. And you can see I'm kind of like lining it up with where my, I thought my body was. And I'm like, okay, the hat is kind of right about here, holding it by the very tippy top and then dropping it to the floor. And then I go inside the bathroom and then just walk out and run away. So the one thing to remember is that you're gonna wanna keep the camera rolling the entire time. You're not gonna wanna touch it. You're not gonna wanna start and stop it in between each dropping of the thing because when you click the record button on a camera, the chances of the camera or the tripod moving even just the slightest amount is really high. So you're just gonna wanna let it run the entire time so that you don't run into that issue. So I think I'm actually gonna go with the first take because my body is actually the most centered in the door frame. So I'm gonna come over here to the back of my clip and I'm gonna click on my layer and I'm gonna hit Shift Alt F, which is to split the layer. The default After Effects key for this is Shift Alt D. I changed mine to F, don't ask questions. So I'm gonna split my layer right there and that's where I run in. And then I'm going to just play this and right where I hit the door, right about there, I'm gonna do it again, Shift Alt F to split the layer. Then I'm gonna come down here a little bit where I'm changing off camera over here and I'm just gonna grab a plate of our scene because we're gonna need just a blank plate of the room. Again, I'm gonna hit Shift Alt F to split my layer and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that and we're gonna continue moving on to where the shorts drop. I'm gonna grab right where the shorts fall, right as they start to leave my fingers. So right about there is gonna be good. So again, Shift Alt F, yours is gonna be Shift Alt D, but you can change it in the keyboard preferences if you like. So there you go, there's the shorts. Split my layer again. Come over here to the shirt. And right as it leaves my hand, so right about there, again, split the layer. Just grab it until it hits the floor. And the hat is the last, right as it's leaving my fingers. So right about there, split the layer and let it hit the ground. And then last but not least, me coming out of the bathroom literally as soon as the door starts cracking open. So one frame before that and split the layer and now we're good. So now all this stuff in between, I'm actually just gonna delete because we don't need it. So we don't need that. This is our plate. Don't need any of this. These are our pants. Don't need any of this. Don't need this. Don't need this. Over here is our shirt and hat. I'm just gonna bring those over to the front, kind of stacking them all on top of each other and then our end plate of me running out. So let's start masking, because now we can. So what we're gonna do is come over here to our very last clip right when I hit the door, and we're gonna make sure that we just go straight into the plate on the bottom layer there. So bring our plate over. 
So now theoretically, if I do this, now I just disappear through the door, right? So now we gotta start masking out the clothes on top of it. So let's start by doing our pants. And what I'm gonna do is just very, very roughly, because it doesn't need to be super accurate for this first one, is I'm gonna take my pen tool and on our layer with the shorts, I'm just gonna draw a line following the door frame. And I'm just gonna come across like this. Make sure to not get my fingers in any of it. And then come down to the floor again and just create a quick mask there. Then what I'm gonna do is click on that layer, hit M on the keyboard twice to bring up our mask parameters and I'm going to feather it 10 pixels because we don't want any hard lines where our mask is. So now this is looking pretty clean and I run to the door, boop, and then there are my shorts. And you can kind of see my fingers here in the mask still. So what we can do is we can open up the mask path and we can set a mask path right for frame one. And then we're gonna go over to the second frame and then just drag the mask down just a little bit. So we're making sure that I'm clearing the fingers out of the way because we don't wanna see those. All right, there you go. Shorts are done. What I do recommend doing is actually coming over like three frames maybe and just trimming this back, I guess, which makes everything that we just did here obsolete, but you know, that's editing. So just coming over three frames and just kind of cheating it a little bit so the shorts are falling lower in the frame because it just makes the next part, which is the shirt, a lot easier so you don't have to do as much masking. So now what we'll do is pull over our shirt layer and we're gonna do the exact same thing here, except this time we're gonna make sure that we really go along the bottom of the shirt in a clean mask because the chances of this overlaying over the shorts layer underneath are very high but we only have to do the bottom. And then once we go across the bottom, we can again just kind of come up here and do a very, very rough mask around the outside of this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there you go. So now we can just adjust this mask to make sure that we are incorporating as much of the shorts as possible. So maybe we'll put another one here to kind of start tapering the shadow off. And there you go. So now again here, we'll hit M on the keyboard, set a mask path, and then we're gonna come over just a few frames here. And we're going to double click on this mask and just kind of bring it down. There you go, making sure that we're not going over the shorts and adjusting this mask over time, which is why we're setting our keyframes so that we can start incorporating more of the shirt and more of the shadow as we start getting closer to the ground. Okay, and maybe we'll go over another two frames, double click on the mask, bring this down. And now we're getting everything, the shadow and all, which is exactly what we want. And then I'm assuming when we come up here, it is still cutting off the top. So while this keyframe is still selected on the mask, what I can do is just move the entire mask up like that. And we'll go over to our other keyframe and do the same thing. Double click and just raise this a little bit. So now we're getting the whole shirt. So now the shorts hit the ground. Come over a few more frames. Make sure that our shirt is entirely in the frame here. Just adjusting our mask as we go along making sure that we're clear top of frame, which we are. And then the shirt is going to start hitting the ground. So we're gonna to try to incorporate this as much as possible over our shorts, just like so, looking good. And then we're gonna go over one frame and then drag out this guy and make it fill the entire floor in just one frame. So now our topmost layer is the shirt falling on top of the shorts instead of the shorts layer by itself. So now that should be looking real good if we go frame by frame. So far, so good. You can see kind of a hard line on our mask because we never feathered it. So we're gonna make sure to just tool this down and feather it by 10 pixels as well. So no hard lines on the door. Shorts and shirt are done. And now you see how the shorts kind of hit the ground first and then the shirt, and then it switches over to our mask right here. So now it's just the shirt layer that's going over the shorts. And that's gonna make it look a lot more natural and a lot more fluid. Last but not least, the hat. Come over here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna come up to our hat layer, make sure it's selected here, grab our mask, and just make a very rough outline around our hat. We're gonna hit M on the keyboard, set our mask, and we're just gonna come over a few frames, and we're gonna follow it, and we can start scaling it bigger as we go so that it can include more of the shadows and more of the background, which is totally fine. Go over a few more frames, make sure that we're grabbing all of it. A few more frames. Double click, find our hat, a few more frames. So now our hat is down towards the ground and we will do the exact same thing we did with the shirt, which is go over one frame and then make sure that this mask includes everything that's on the ground. And we can just adjust this to make it a nice square too. 
So now what you're gonna do is once you have the basic masking done, uh, don't forget to come up to this layer right here, hit M twice and feather it 10 pixels. So now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is just make sure that our masks are actually lining up with all of our clothing items appropriately. And anywhere that it gets really close to the edge of the item, you're just gonna wanna come in and just adjust the mask. And as long as the keyframes are set, it will set an additional keyframe. So we just wanna make sure that none of our items are getting cut off by the mask, which the hat looks like it's good. And then actually what I'm gonna do is just pull this last frame over and just replace that. So we'll just extend all of these clips just a little bit and let's watch it through. Run into frame, here we go, hit the door. Nice, so now that's looking really nice. All of our clothing items fall and hit the ground. They are all masked out individually. It lines up pretty well. Uh, the hat is a little bit far off from where I actually was, but it's okay. I think the effect still sells. So you can see down here that it's cutting off on the last frame of the hat. And this is exactly what I was talking about before. Whatever the last frame that it's resting on, it's including enough area in your scene so that when the hat falls and rests, it doesn't get cut off. So now as soon as the hat stops moving on the ground, which is right about there is its final resting place. I'm gonna bring over the clip right on top of everything else where I walk out of the door. And we've already set it up so that it's literally one frame from opening. And now the hat kind of rests on the ground and then I open the door and I'm already in my new outfit. Cool, all right, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's watch it through. Make sure we feel okay about this. Nice. I feel good, I feel good about that. So what we're gonna do is come over back to our very first clip. I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard for beginning, and then I'm gonna come over here when I run out of frame, and I'm going to hit N on the keyboard for end. Right click, trim comp to work area, so now we're just working on a timeline with what we have here. And the last thing that I would recommend doing is taking all of these layers and pre-composing them by hitting Shift Control C on your keyboard, and we're gonna call this close. And then if you have any camera shake presets, I would recommend adding a very light camera shake to this because on the tripod, it looks very stale and you can tell that it's an editing trick. But as soon as you add camera shake, it gives it a little bit more realism like somebody's filming it handheld and it'll sell the effect tremendously more than if it was just on a tripod. I use the Red Giant Universe camera shake. It comes with the Red Giant Universe pack. I love it, highly recommend it. 100 bucks for the entire year, totally worth it. Not gonna get into it now. I'm gonna finish this tutorial. So I'm gonna come up here to my effects and come down to Red Giant Universe Utilities and go to Camera Shake. I'm going to choose my preset of handheld. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, it has now added a nice handheld jiggle to my camera, which is gonna help sell the effect even more. And the final product. Nice, I think that looks pretty good. A couple added sound design elements will really go a long way here. So if you wanted to actually film the hat hitting the door and like hitting the ground, you can kind of mix the audio into itself. So it sounds like all the clothes are hitting the ground. You can use the audio from the camera itself. You can add a little sound effect when you hit the door. All of those things will help sell this effect tremendously more, especially the camera shake. Now I know that that tutorial may have been a little bit confusing for you, but I promise it's not. And that's why we do a recap at the end of these lessons, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, you're gonna need a tripod. You're gonna need to manual focus your camera and set manual white balance when you shoot this. Number two, you're gonna to wanna to remember your body positioning when running up against the door, so in that way when you drop your clothing items, you can kind of line it up to where you think your body was at the time. Number three, you're gonna drop all your clothing items individually, already dressed in the outfit that you're gonna change into after the effect, then once they're all hit the ground, don't touch the clothes, go into the room, and then come out and shoot it all in one take. Then for the edit, what you're gonna do is just mask around each clothing item as they fall to the ground, making sure to feather the mask so we don't see any hard lines in the animation. And then at the end, adding a little bit of camera shake and sound design to sell the effect even more. Uh, um. Sure, the recap sounds easy and the actual editing of it might be difficult, but hey, if you've never done this before, hopefully today you learned something new and you can kind of push yourself a little bit farther in doing these Zack King style effects for yourself. That about does it today for me, guys. My name is Nadia Ian Sands, and this is Learn How to Edit Stuff, official 100,000 YouTube plaque partner. Very excited about that. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. Hit me up on Twitter at Nadia Ian Sands if you guys have any questions or if you want me to do a very specific tutorial. As long as it's not insane, like, you know, Avengers Infinity War CGI, I will try my best to do it. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.